Hi, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm here to help you reach your potential as a leader and a human being. Welcome to Remarkable TV. Today, I'm going to tell you my Allen Wrench saga. Are you ready? Let's go. So a while back, I had eight chairs arrive at my house for me to put together. Eight chairs to put together. And uh, each of these chairs, amongst all the other things that was required, each of them had seven bolts with a hex nut or an Allen wrench top. So seven times eight, 56 of these long Allen wrench bolts that I was going to put in with the included Allen wrench. Well, no big deal. I've done this many times. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, the problem is I did the first one and here's what I found. Uh, it was hard. It was slow. It was frustrating because you can't get into all the spots and you can use it this way. You got to use it this way. Um, it was, it hurt my fingers because you're really turning it hard. And I was kind of messing because you're taking it in and out so often, kind of messing up the top of the bolt just a little bit. None of these things were really all that great. Could I have done it this way? Sure. Could I have finished it this way? Sure. But instead, after I finished two chairs and my frustration level was high and the time it was taking me was long, I stopped and I went <laughs> to the store. And I went to the store and I bought one of these. This is a beautiful little hex wrench that you put on your socket. And this is how I did the other six chairs with this tool. Uh, this tool was faster. This tool was easier. This tool was better because I could get them tighter and I could be effective. Uh, this tool didn't uh, frustrate me. In fact, it was kind of fun and I didn't end up with any hurt fingers. I had a better product in less time. It was easier all the way around. You say, okay, Kevin, why are you telling us this story? It's kind of boring. Well, um, there are lessons. And the lessons are why I told you the story about the Allen wrench and the socket. So here are the lessons. Lesson number one is um, buy the chairs already built. <laughs> well, perhaps I certainly could have built the bought the chairs built, had that as a choice and made a conscious choice not to, in part because I kind of like to put things together once in a while. And I mean, I, I consciously chose to put them together. I knew it would take me some time, but it's a fair question. You could have said, why didn't you just buy them built? It was a conscious decision. It wasn't really about the money. It was about the chance to do it, having the experience doing it. Second lesson, uh, or maybe really the first lesson, I suppose, is uh, remember your goals. Remember I just said that one of the reasons I did it was I wanted to enjoy putting these chairs together. It's not like I didn't trust someone else to put the chairs together. It's not like I didn't have the $99 to have the chairs delivered and put together. But one of my goals was to enjoy the process of putting them together. When my fingers were hurting using this, I was not enjoying it. I said I was frustrated. It wasn't making me very happy. So if I remember my goal, I might want to stop and do something else, right? So uh, the, the third lesson is to think about the big picture. Well, the big picture is I want the chairs to be sturdy. I want the chairs to be well put together, right? Well, I also told you that once I realized that if I went and picked up this tool, see, I had a ratchet, but I didn't have this. I went and bought this tool. I actually got better final result. The big picture was safe chairs, right? So I got chairs that were put together more tightly, uh, done more effectively, and without messing up the tops of the bolts. Uh, next is always remember this lesson think best tool for the job. See, I think there are a lot of us that are working on a project and we're just going to finish the project because we're already started and we don't really want to do anything else and this tool will work and we know it'll work so we just keep at it. But the real question is, is this the best tool for the job? Absolutely not. This, for that job, is the best tool. Is there a time when this tool works? Of course, but not really not the best tool. When we get the best tool for the job, we're going to get better results. We're probably going to enjoy it more, or be frustrated less, it's probably going to be safer, and we could go on and on and on. And I'm not just talking about physical tools here, right? It's a metaphor, right? You get it? Think about the best tool for the job. And then the last lesson is stop and think. If I had just kept going, I'd have just kept saying, man, my, man, that really hurts my fingers. But I stopped and said, wait a minute. Why don't I just go to Lowe's, pick one up and come back? Took a few minutes to do that. And maybe if the only goal for the project was speed of completion, maybe I'd have finished faster 
with just this. I don't think so, but maybe. But see, in the moment, that's what we think. Well, it'll take time if we stop and we go get the right tool and we come back. Why don't I just keep plugging? And there's a time to keep plugging, but there's a time to at least ask the question, would it make sense for us to change our approach and do something different? And maybe not always would it make sense. But remember, my number one goal wasn't about speed, although I didn't want to spend all day. And my number one goal was something else. And once I stopped and said, What's, what am I really trying to accomplish here? Then I made a new choice. Okay, let me close this sort of silly, but hopefully useful episode of Remarkable TV with today's tweet. When doing a task, sometimes the best thing you can do is stop and ask, is this the best way to succeed? Every week I shoot these videos. Not every week do I use an Allen wrench, but every week I shoot these videos. But did you know that every week I also do a podcast called the Remarkable Leadership Podcast? And maybe you found this interesting and maybe you think I'm kind of smart, which would be great. But good news is on the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, it's not really about me. It's about my guest. And we have awesome, wise, insightful, and intelligent guests that join me to talk about issues and ideas related to leadership and personal growth. And I hope you'll join us. You can follow the link here to sign up or to just listen to a specific episode. And so listen to the podcast and keep coming back here to watch Remarkable TV.